Welcome, my name is Fabian and in the following I'm going to talk about how you add required services to support a given physical design. When we talk about those services we depend on in all kind of vSphere and Horizon components, one very important aspect is the Active Directory. So the Horizon Connection Server, App Volumes must be joined to an Active Directory domain. Important if we want to integrate multiple domains with each other, we require a one or two way trust relationship to give users of another domain access to a certain, to a certain horizon instance in our environment. When we talk about App Volumes Manager, we can also integrate different independent Active Directory domains into App Volumes Manager. Our Horizon Composer requires a specific user that has permissions that can integrate with the Active Directory. Typically, we differentiate between a Horizon Composer user that has had the default operational tasks or a user that allows the reuse of already existing computer accounts. So in one way, we need to, to give the following permissions. List contents, read all properties, write all properties, read permissions, reset password, create computer objects and delete computer objects. What is the reason? Typically, if we use the Composer to create link clone virtual desktops, um, during, the, during the customization phase, the Composer creates within the Active Directory new computer objects. It sets specific passwords. It requires certain permissions to, to create all of the Active Directory relevant objects. If we configure it in a way that we allow the reuse of pre-existing computer objects, which means we have somehow created the computer objects up front, we don't need that many permissions for our Horizon user. Then we only need list contents, read all properties, read permissions, and the permission to reset the password. Another very important topic in the physical design of our Horizon environment is the discussion around SSL certificates. All VMware Horizon components come by default with a self-signed certificate for HTTPS communication. The problem here is that yeah, the end user or other components do not really know who has signed this SSL certificate and therefore do not trust them by default. What we need to do here is to, to replace those self-signed certificates with an enterprise certificate authority signed certificate or a public recognized certificate. So that's what we need to do and that's where we, where we need to consider certain things. If we generate certificate signing requests, we also need to make sure that we keep the private key that comes with the signing request. We need to store this private key securely. We need to transfer that really carefully since we don't want to have this private key accessible to any non-authorized users or systems available. When we talk about the usage of wildcards, we really need to include the, yeah, the security team into the discussion. We need to discuss about it right up front in the conceptual design, what kind of certificates we need and also in which Horizon components, we need to replace the self-signed certificates with CA-based um, certificates. And once we configure those certificates, even though for many components, and you should always look up the certain requirements in the product documentation, a key length of 1024 is enough. We recommend to use a minimum of 2048 for the key length so that we fulfill all of the security requirements by modern browsers. When we talk about building a Horizon and vSphere infrastructure, we also depend on core services like DNS, NTP and the mechanism how we assign IP addresses. So typically, we, for all Horizon components, we need a DNS entry and we need the forward and reverse lookup work properly so that we can translate an FQDN, a host name and a domain into an IP address and that we can translate the IP address into a host name so that all solutions work quite properly. We should make sure that dynamic updates 
um, are enabled so that virtual desktops that are newly deployed, that are newly joining our environment, have a proper DNS name right from the beginning, and that scavenging is enabled um, in case that we that we use instant clones or linked clones in our environment. Maybe it makes sense to put some components also on the management cluster within our management blocks, like a DNS server, like any kind of yeah, Active Directory domain controller that includes a DNS service, so that we are removing some dependencies from any kind of non-controllable third-party services for our management block. And important, since we typically use for our servers, for our Horizon management block components, static IP addresses, we need or we recommend the usage of a DHCP server for our virtual desktop networks where we get a dynamically assigned IP address once a virtual desktop is created that has a very optimized lease configuration of four hours, eight hours to make sure that we have a, a very fluctuating number of virtual desktops that get created and destroyed very often that we still have enough IP addresses available and therefore ensure connectivity from the end user to the virtual desktop in the end.